guys are doing today? Great. Well, any Falcon fans in here? Sure. Any other fans in here? No? We're all Falcon fans today. Oh, I love that. I love that. I We're love all that. Falcon fans today. Rise up, rise up. Rising up. All right, so um, again, my name is Brian. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons Locker Room. I'm going to give you a couple of facts about the Atlanta Falcons Locker Room. In this locker room right now, we have a total of 70 lockers, but additionally, if you see those red and black lockers right here behind you guys, those are for the uh, practice squad because, you know, of course, when it's season, it's preseason right now. We cut players, trade players, add them to the team, and we have a family room. So say if you are a member of the player of the team, we have a specific room if they do not want to be, I guess, in the stands. Um, this that we offer them food, of course, to make them feel like they're at home. So it's a lounge area. It's like set up kind of like a, a luxury living room style. Fans like the parents, the grandmas, the girlfriends, the wives, and everything. They can also watch TV and they'll watch them on the game as well. We also have something that the Saints don't have, which is showers. Every game day, they bring it to. They bring in four thousand pounds of equipment, which is equivalent to two tons, and we, they also use over fifteen hundred towels a game. That's over 10,000 towels, easily. Anybody wants to, wants to wash their towels? No? What about for six figures? Okay. All right, he said, yeah, okay. Yeah. I-A-D-F-A. Yeah, that's to LA on Christmas Day. 2015. 2015, he remembers the exact year. I was flying and he came on, he had his niece and nephew with him. He was taking them to Hawaii for Christmas and New Year's. They were gonna drive the Tesla from... Portland? Portland. Seattle, then Seattle to yeah. LA. And to LA, I remember. And um, Coop gave us a nice Christmas gift, me and my crew. He bought us tickets to the Lakers game, our box. We had a box for the game on Christmas, it was so cool. Um, fast forward two years ago, this Tesla hat walked on board of my flight. Was it Columbus? You, I don't know. I don't know that one, <laughs> but, but it, it happened again. On. We were reunited. We were, I saw the hat and I was like, cool. And he looked up and he was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> She recognized me before I recognized her. I mean, it was so it's normally amazing. the other way around. Yeah, it was so cool. So after that, we kept in contact. So this year, I called Coop and I say, hey, guess what I'm about to do? He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to get a Tesla. Yeah, <laughs> she did. Let's go see this thing. Yeah, you have to meet her. We got to meet her. <laughs> What'd you name her? Bonnie. Bonnie. Okay. <laughs> I you didn't register to begin with. Yeah. So it's sinking in now. It's like Bonnie and Clive, you know, we're like riders together. So we got to pull Bonnie over. Where's Bonnie? Right here? Oh, yeah. Wow. We got the uh, the jersey from uh, Jimmy Chitwood. If you haven't seen it, it is a must-see film. It's called Hoosiers, and it's a movie 
about a small town Indiana school when when there wasn't class basketball and it was wide open and the little Milan had to play Indianapolis for the state title and watch the movie tell me about the jersey Can I get your autograph? Can you sign my checkbook, please? I think it's awesome what you're doing. It's so sick. The first time in 2016, when we got to the desert at Kingman, Arizona, and we were going through stretches of 100 miles with no services, over 100 degree heat. Who did, we shouldn't have been out there doing it. And I was, I knew that I was hurting, but I wanted to get everybody back to civilization again before we stopped. And my feet had swollen so much that I couldn't really get my tennis shoes back on. So me and my sister walked in under my own power to the ER in Kingman, Arizona. And we go in and the doc sees me. He sets me up, tells me to set up and he's like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? I, he said, I said, well, we're, we're dribbling basketball across the United States. And he's like, how old are you? I said, well, I'm 50. I'm doing this for my 50th uh, to honor mom. And uh, he's like, you know, I'm an active runner. I'm 35. And there ain't a chance I'd be out there trying to do what you're doing. So he starts looking at me and he's like, get those shoes off. I took the shoes off and the sweat and the odor was so bad. He's like, oh man, put those things back on. Come on now. Anyways, he's, he fills my calves and he's like, what? What you've got here is you're, you're desalted and you're dehydrated. And you're just a few steps away from, I believe it's called compartment surgery. And what they do there is they open you up and cut away muscle tissue. He's like, what you have to do is take two weeks off and elevate your legs and keep them packed in ice. And, and, and you can probably heal up and not have to have the surgery. So anyways, we didn't take 14 days off. Uh, yeah, I don't know the exact, but I think it was about seven. So what were you trying to We had to. I was hurting bad. And I could barely walk. Well, I have one But we got healed up and, and, and we took off again. I ran into a lot of folks today and they were all very concerned for me. But we've ran in this before. We're, we're trained for this. And yes, it's still dangerous. But when you train for something, you can you can accomplish a lot. Started at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium on Monday. Oh, did you? Yeah, and we're trying to go as far as we can and smart and healthy and mm -hmm. not overheating or dehydrating or desalting. Oh yeah. And our goal is to do 30 miles a day. Last night we went longer than normal. Because it was 100 degrees yesterday. Yeah, I got up to 106 with the heat index. Yeah. So where did we end up randomly? Right here at the farmer's produce. Come on in, man. All the stuff we get from uh, the farms around here in Georgia and stuff like that. We do make some of the stuff ourselves, like our pickles over here. Um, we've got pickles. We've got regular pickles. We've got jalapeno pickles. Jalapeno pickles? Mmm! 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 
Wow. Mmm, mmm. You got to try these. You, I, I, this is the first time I've sampled this, and I already know you can't eat just one. You can't. So here goes number two. Yeah. That's the way we drink where I grew up. Right out of the spigot. Looky there. This is the name right here. Oh. We'll put the other two in the car. But uh, randomly, we we ended up here last night in the dark, and we knew we were supposed to be here when we saw the farmer's market. And uh, we got to meet Austin. He told us a lot about his uh, the KJ's market, and the hospitality has it's been out of this world spectacular. So they cook barbecue on uh, Fridays and Saturdays. Sunday? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Friday and Saturdays, barbecue. We will be back to chow down. Thank you, man. Thank you. We'll see ya. The first thing they need to know is they want to know why are you doing this? Are we are we trying to get kids to go out and, and, and people to dribble across the country? No. What we're showing them is the endurance, the resolve to never give up and keep on going. Getting ready to go up to the campus and the stadium and take a tour of the stadium. But as we was dribbling by here last night, we saw this and one of my dear friends, uh, Les Bunner, he painted this, I saw it, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to have that painting. When my mother passed away, she asked my sister to sing one song. She had Denise sing The Rose. That's why the painting is so meaningful. But why did we stop here? Why did we come back here? We dribbled this already yesterday. Honeysuckle Rose is Willie's motorhome on the road. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. I was just wondering what you were doing, that's all. Yeah, um, well, we're dribbling the basketball. We started this time at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh -huh. We're on our way to UG right now. We made it in there last night too. So you run this uh, World of Futons. That's actually my shop. Sweet. Yeah. How long you been at it? Um, well, I've been working there for eight years, but I own it. I own it for two years now. My name's Addison. I'm actually the grandson of the person who started it all. So David Frederick is actually one who started it. He uh, lived uh, in that hippie commune in Connecticut. He learned how to make futons there. When he came down here, he started working construction. He told his construction buddies he was going to make a futon shop. Nobody knew what those were. That's him in his front yard selling futons. There's all the bales of cotton. He actually sold the business, I think, in 93. Uh, then he went up and cooked for Mitsukushi. And he started pretty much cooking for people who had, like, tumors. Uh, one of my favorite stories is he there's a guy who had a golf ball-sized tumor inside of his stomach. Uh, so what he did was he cooked some type of rice for, like, 11 hours. It turns into a glue. But pretty much it stopped up the guy's insides uh, and starved out the tumor. And about eight months, he was, uh, you know, on horses and... Uh, you know, doing the things that he was doing before. But before that, the doctors told him that they couldn't do anything for him, that, you know, he's kind of a lost cause. But after that, my mother got into an accident. He came back down here to take care of her. There was a British guy who came into town. He bought the store from the big company. And then the British guy pretty much found my grandfather and was like, hey, you want your business back? He was like, I kind of want to get out of it. And uh, my grandfather was like, yeah, I think that was in 2001. Uh, and then after that, he pretty much ran the business until about 2017 when i bought it i've been working here for about eight years oh that's aria she's here every day 
Well, for the most part. Um, she is the, I guess, the shop dog. She doesn't know how to be on camera. Everybody comes in and loves on her. <laughs> I'm just stuck here in a dream. So we started off today heading in to uh, take a tour of Stegman Stadium and we met up with uh, Coach Jay. We can't thank Coach Green and, and Coach Jay enough for taking a moment to share right before their practice to let us see uh, inside. But anyways, let's go out and see how many we can get in before sundown and keep on. <laughs> 